what he's telling you is not only is the law not done away with, right? But animal sacrifice, but he's giving you the purpose of why Christ died and what he came to do. Let's get Hebrews 7 and 25, right? I'm just, just to add on to and build on what the officer is saying. Why did Christ come? What, what was his purpose? Why did he die? Because many people die, right? Any, any, any man that's come to save his people has died. But Christ came to die for the sins of his people. What was the difference between Christ and everybody else that came to save their people that died? Christ had no sin. He had no sin, right? But watch this. Let's start here. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession. To make what? Intercession for them. How was Christ able to make intercession? You know what you know what intercession is? Real quick, somebody Google it. I'm a I'm a I'm gonna speak about it, but somebody Google it. We're gonna get the Google definition, right? Intercession means somebody somebody who deals with, like a lawyer would make intercession for you to the authorities in right. court. You have somebody that plaintiff versus right defendant. The lawyers make intercession between the judge and the defendant, the judge and the plaintiff, however, right? So Christ has become our lawyer to God. Who required our blood for, say, adultery, like the officer was just going into? Who required our blood? Meaning death. God did. God required that blood. So Christ, being a perfect sacrifice, having no sin, no blemish, he could now make intercession for us. So when we sin, Christ is, when we sin, thank you, when we sin, Christ is up in the heaven saying, Lord, forgive him, Father. Forgive him. Let me work on him. Let me get him together real quick. And, and, and then ch we'll check back with him. In a That's what's actually happening in the heavens. We just read it. Watch this. Read Hebrew. Oh, you got intercession yes, for sir. me. This is the definition. Come on. Definition for intercession. The action of intervening. Inter intervening. Whoa, Lord, don't kill him. Wait, just give me one second. Let me work with him. Let me work with the, let me work with the children. Let me work with the sheep. Right? Watch this. Intervening on behalf of another. Uh -huh. So Christ is in the heavens intervening between us and who? The Most High God. Right. That is why Christ came. That is why he did no sin and was a perfect sacrifice because of our sin. That's right. Because of our sin. Now where we at? Read Hebrews uh, 725 again. Sir. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. Right. Right. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. So he's talking about the uttermost, meaning all of Israel, all of his people. That's the uttermost, come on. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So now, why does the Bible have to say the uttermost? Why does the Bible have to specify all Israel? Because at one point, you had the Gentiles who were known as the northern kingdom of Israel. Right. They were not other nations of people. They were one nation. We are one nation of people. Right. However, what did the northern kingdom do, who were called Gentiles in the New Testament? What did they do? They went off into idolatry. They went off into sacrificing and witchcraft to other gods. That's what they did. You can read about it in uh, 1 Kings chapter 12. The, the kingdom of Israel split in half. One kingdom went into the hill, into the mountains, under one king and the other stayed in Jerusalem those that stayed in Jerusalem kept the laws kept the culture kept the traditions of our forefathers the others went off into witchcraft and idolatry right. burning their kids in fire so that they God can bless them and all this mad foolishness they was doing so what did they have to do what's the what's the penalty for said crimes death death so Christ had to come to restore the rest of Israel back to one people so that they wouldn't all have to die because you realize even to this day right now had not Christ came they could not repent from that right there's no coming back from that right. so when Christ came he came to make intercession to the utmost meaning for no matter what you did right. a murderer a drug dealer right a child molester right you can repent you can get your mind right but you have to come back to the laws to do that because only the laws of God say thou shall not commit adultery only the law say that. 
the black mind, the Negro mind, we say, well, I'm committing adultery because he get on my nerves. I'm committing adultery because she get on my nerves. That's what we say. So I'm going to just step out. I'm going to find me somebody make me happy. That's what our minds say. But the laws don't say that. Go to Jeremiah 17 and 9. The reason, the reason, reason we got to specify this, my brother, my sister, is because as we begin to change, as we begin to come back to the laws of God, we have a lot. We live in a wicked world. We live in a wicked society. And it, it will comfort all the wickedness that we have in our minds. And we'll say, well, I've been taught this or I feel like this. And I, we have to understand, first and foremost, our greatest and first enemy is who? Ourself. Our own mind. Watch God tell you. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9. Bring it out. The heart is deceitful above all things. The heart. This muscle that pumps blood in your chest it's not the heart God is talking about because it right. can't be deceitful. It can only pump blood, right? So the, the heart that he's referring to is your mind. Your mind is deceitful above all things. Watch this. And desperately wicked. And what? And desperately wicked. That's our heart. That's our mind without understanding why Christ came and what he requires of us for his sacrifice. Come on. Who can know it? The, the Bible is saying who can know it because... Our mind deceives us into thinking the, 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 the sin that I've done, it's not so bad. Right. Or when I commit sin, it's because this. This is my reason that I have. And we'll reason with sin. We'll reason with death. But God, Christ, requires one thing from us, and that is us keeping the laws of God. That's right. That's what he requires of us. Let's get 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. 2 Peter 2, verse 21. Real fast. Right, we gotta appreciate Christ, and, and, and it's we it's a it's a very easy thing to say, but we have not been taught how to love God. We have not been taught how to appreciate what He's done, what He's come to do. That's why when we hear certain things, uh, uh, it's hard when we hear the Bible in reality. It's hard for us to 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 come to terms with it. But when we go into the, some of these churches, and they sit there and lie to us, that's so much easier for us to deal with. It's easy. You know why? Because the churches does not require us to change. Right. It does right. not require us. Say, come as you are. You're a pedophile. You can stay that way. Just keep it on the down. You know what I'm saying? Pay your tithes. Sing, shuck and jive in the choir. Do all that. And be quiet about what you're doing out there. Don't change it. Don't. There ain't none of my business. That's what they say. No, Don't judge. Lest thou be. That's what they say. But how this man, what's going to happen when Christ meet this man as a pedophile? Teach. And whose job was it to, to tell him he's in sin? Right. Yeah. It's the pastor's job. But that's what's failed us. That's what's failed us. Watch this. First Peter 2 and 21. I mean, <laughs> First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called. It says for here even unto were ye called. Meaning all of us called. Right? Come on. Because Christ also suffered for us. Christ suffered for us. He suffered for us. You know how we, how we was when we was in slavery... They did experiments and things on us, and they said it's okay because we don't feel pain. Niggas don't feel pain. Just, you know, you can cut their leg off. You can, uh, how they figured out abortion and all that stuff, that was on slaves. Bring it out. How they figured that science and stuff out. They did that on my sisters as, in, as slaves. That's when that happened. It was called medical apartheid. Look it up. There's books about it and everything. But that's how, how do you think they learned the science that they have nowadays? Right? I digress. But Christ suffered for our sins. He suffered for us. Right? Watch this. Leaving us an example. Leaving us an example. Watch this. What, what was the example? How should we deal with the example? Come on. That ye should follow his steps. That ye, we should follow the steps of our Messiah. The steps of the King of Kings. Right. Meaning, you know what they say all the time, sister in church? Nobody, we all fall short, right? That's what they say. Matthews 5:48, real fast. Matthews 5:48. They say no nobody's perfect. We all fall short all these things, right? But I want to challenge that that line of that line of rationale, that line of, of of reasoning, right? With what Christ himself said. Watch this. Book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. Bring it out. Be ye therefore perfect, Whoa. even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. So I'm illustrating this to, to, to go against and combat the common thought that we have that's being raised as Christians. 
nobody perfect, come as you are, do what thou wilt, woman thou art loose. All these things that say, you don't got to keep no commandments. Do what you want to do. The only commandment they enforce is tithes. Jeez. Pay your tithes. That's it. What other commandment is it enforced? They might hear in there talk about so say say something there. You women, y'all need to stop sleeping with all these men all around that house. But is it enforced? If they need to stop doing X, Y, and Z, what is that pastor willing to do if they do it? What is the judgment, pastor? But there is a judgment for not paying your tithes. There's a judgment for that. There is a judgment for asking a question. Pastor, you said X, Y, and Z. That's, the, that's a lie in the Bible. Can we go over that real quick? Who asks questions during service? That's unheard of. You've never seen it before. Right. But it's all lies. All you hear is lies. So what we what we got to do is we got to use this Bible to combat how we was raised. We I was raised in Christianity. Raise your hand if you was raised in Christianity. Raise your hand. Everybody out here was raised as a quote unquote Christian and never knew the Bible. Hey. We're learning it today. Hey. Ain't that something? Watch this. Read it again. Verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Perfect. So now, Christ said, be therefore perfect. Psalms chapter 19. Then we're going to get into these laws. We got to get into these laws so that we can be and accomplish what Christ the King commanded we do. He said, be therefore perfect. We got to get to it. We got to get to it. And you know what we got to do, mama? We got to teach our babies to do the same thing. We got to be that example. And yes, it is a tall order. It's a big job. We, we got, I got, hold on, wait, wait, I got one, a couple more things for you, because I can't, I have to give you thorough warning, right? Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Because how, how would we be perfect? What is the definition of perfect that Christ was talking about? Let's get into it. The law of the Lord is perfect. So the laws of the Lord is perfect. When we keep the laws of the Lord, what does that make us? Perfect. That's what that makes us. It ain't perfect because you got on I, my favorite color green, so my sister got on green. Now you perfect. No, 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 no. That's my opinion. God said perfect is keeping his laws. Right. Come on. Converting the soul. And that's what changes us. That's what take a, a drug addict that's addicted, don't know no other way. Methadone ain't helped in 20 years. The laws of the the laws of God is what converts us. That's right. Right. The creator of everything said that. Right. God is the only thing that can convert us. His right. laws is the only thing that can convert us. Right. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of the Lord is the Bible. The Bible is the testimony of the Lord. And it's sure. It's sure. It ain't no mistake about it. It ain't going to mess up. It ain't going to miss. It's sure. Watch this. Making wise the simple. And if you didn't know, this Bible will teach you something. This Bible going to let you know exactly what is and what ain't. Right. Right. About everything. Watch this. Is that it? Yes, sir. Now give me um the law. Let's get into the let's get into some laws. Right? We're going to deal with first and foremost, my sister, you got on pants. Brother, he he went over this, and I'm I got to give you this law. All right? So that you know and you have something that you can convert to, something that you can repent for. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So the Bible say a man can't wear what a woman is supposed to wear. And a woman can't wear what a man is supposed to wear. That's what the Bible say. Now we know that, right? Who don't know that? Everybody knows that, right? But this world, the witchcraft of this world, it makes you feel like all is okay whatever you feel is okay right a lot of times we talk to sisters about this here law and we they say we, we say well what pertains to a man especially if they're young you know what i'm saying you got a little age on you so you got more wisdom with you than these younger sisters nowadays right they genuinely don't know that they great grandmother didn't wear pants they don't know that they don't they can't fathom a time where that was the case so they're more confused so we got to really go into this right because this world does not, only the Bible condemns a woman dressing like a man. Even though women are easily able to condemn a man dressing like a woman. Right? Is it something wrong with a woman wearing pants? A lot of our sisters say no. But is it something wrong with a man wearing a dress? Yes, that's very easy to identify. You see the witchcraft in that? 
That's called cross-dressing. But this world, mate, first and foremost, had to destroy the mind of the black woman. You know why? Because God created them to be a help and a stay to the black man, right. who is your savior, who is the rulers of this world. That's right. So how do you destroy a nation? How do you destroy a people? Destroy the man. He used the woman to do to start to initiate that. And he, he changed the roles of the black woman. So now she's the man in the house. She wears the pants in the house. It's all spiritual. It's so much more to it than just an article of clothing. It's a spirit that goes with an article of clothing. Right. right. Just like a man that puts on a dress. Is he going to be out here like strong, chin up, chest out? Huh? Defending his people? Standing up for his nation? Speaking against evil? No, ma'am. No, sir. Absolutely not. He's going to be out here switching. Right. That dress going to put a feminine spirit on that man. That's right. So all that to say this. What spirit has pants put on our sisters? A masculine spirit. Right. A masculine spirit. And I'm going to tell you something if you didn't notice about men. Men can't live together with man. Before you know it, it's going to be a fight. Before you know it, it's gonna be, they're going to bump heads. That's, what, that's how that goes. And it's emphatic. It's, it's, uh, for sure, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We all love each other right here. We brothers. We don't live together though. Right. You know what I'm saying? We, I, see, I see these brothers every single day. But we gotta have, you got to have your own throne. A man need his own throne. You understand? So when you got the woman in the house behaving like the man in the house, with the man in the house, here comes divorce. Here comes bumping heads. Because the roles have been switched. The roles have been switched. So read this again. Now this means so much more to us. Watch this. Verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So God says that's an abomination. Christ did not come and die so that this is now beautiful, is now a, a good thing. No, it's still an abomination. We're able to identify that today. You understand? So we got to repent from that, my sister. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community.